Hey everyone, it's Drayton from Scale Trains and I'm coming to you with another Rivet Counter Spotlight Series video. This week we're going to be taking a look at the latest run of Rivet Counter ET44 Givos in N scale. And of course, we're going to be taking a special look at the Canadian National Heritage and Military Units. Stay tuned. So back in November of 2020, it was right during the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and there was so much uncertainty going on in the North American railroad scene. But that month there was a real bright spot when Canadian National unveiled five specially painted heritage units wearing predecessor paint schemes with iconic road names like EJ&E, Illinois Central, Wisconsin Central, BC Rail and even Grand Trunk. A lot of us rail fans were really excited to see these iconic paint schemes being applied to modern locomotives and four of the five were applied to ET44 Tier 4 Givo. So when we heard about this at Scale Trains, we were so excited because we knew that we'd be able to offer these locomotives in our Rivet Counter brand. We'd previously offered the Norfolk Southern Heritage Units and there was a lot of excitement and a lot of buzz around those. So the Canadian National Heritage Units were the perfect fit into our modern locomotive lineup. So to give a little bit of background history, Canadian National was celebrating the 25th anniversary of their initial public offering. So uh, way back in the 90s, you were able to you know, purchase stock in Canadian National and they were formerly a government owned railroad. So Canadian National has a rich history. They have so many different railroads that make up what they have become today. And they decided to honor those railroads with these special heritage units. So as somebody that grew up in South Central Michigan, I wasn't that far from the Grand Trunk Main Line. I used to see a lot of really cool locomotives, Grand Trunk, BC Rail. Uh, every once in a while, you'd even see an EJ&E unit floating around there. And of course, Wisconsin Central. My, one of my favorites, of course, was BC Rail with the BC Rail Barns. Uh, you know, but over time, uh, as the railroads continued to evolve and modernize because of positive train control, a lot of these BC Rail barn units weren't able to lead. So when I heard about the BC Rail Heritage Unit, I really got excited because it reminded me of when I was a little kid watching those BC Rail barns come through like Lansing, Michigan and Durand, Michigan and places like that. Of course, you know, Chicagoland rail fans, uh, EJ&E was such a big part of the Chicago railroading scene for so many years, for like basically 130 years. And as time has gone on, it's harder and harder to see EJ&E locomotives in the wild. And of course, Canadian National did such an amazing job applying that classic EJ&E, you know, green ball scheme onto the front of a tier four Givo. And we spent so much time painstakingly researching to make sure that we got the colors correct on this locomotive. We've got paint chips for both the orange and the gray underframe, and we're really excited uh, to be able to offer those locomotives in both HO and N scale. And then of course, you've got Wisconsin Central. Again, somebody who grew up in Michigan, I definitely have a soft spot for Wisconsin Central. They were kind of a rags to riches railroad. They inherited all of these low profit lines from uh, Canadian Pacific Sioux line that, that were formerly Milwaukee Road uh, branch lines and things like that. And they basically went from this, this railroad that had all of these older locomotives that were just falling apart, a lot of these lines that were not in the best shape. And over the years, they evolved into becoming one of the most profitable regional railroads in the United States. And that's why CN eventually ended up acquiring them. You know, and I remember as recently as six or seven years ago, seeing a Wisconsin Central locomotive on a weed sprayer train in South Central Michigan, which was so cool. But now, since it's like the only one left, having this heritage unit floating around really brings back a lot of great memories for me. Of course, if you're an Illinois Central fan, uh, it was probably kind of mind blowing to see the IC Death Star scheme applied to a GE locomotive. As many of you know, Illinois Central was a staunch EMD railroad. They very rarely ventured outside of EMD products. So it was kind of interesting to see that Death Star logo applied to a modern GE. But I tell you what, uh, about a year ago, there were some rail fans in Illinois that actually captured a CN train with two Death Star SD70s and the tier four heritage unit on the same train. It was like you were in another universe. Like 
almost like the merger never happened. And I think that's one of the coolest thing about these heritage units. They really bring back memories, but also allow you to create new memories. And I think that's, that is one of the coolest thing about heritage units in the United States today. So in addition to the heritage units, Canadian National also came out with two special military veterans locomotives. They wear this really cool camouflage paint scheme. They have an American flag and a Canadian flag on one side in English. They think veterans on the other side, the same phrase is reiterated in French. It's so cool that they were able to honor veterans in both countries. And what's cool about those locomotives is they, they came out with two. One road number has the squared exhaust, the other road number has the angled exhaust. So that's the easiest way to spot the two. Of course, our rivet counter brand, it's all about railroad road number and era specific detail. So of course we were able to implement those details on the models as well. And you know, uh, another thing about those locomotives, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but PTC was kind of the, the final nail in the coffin for a lot of these really cool older locomotives that just can't lead anymore. Unless they're equipped with PTC, they're just not gonna lead here in the United States. Well, thankfully all the Canadian national units, they're equipped with PTC. So if you're a North American modeler, especially here in the United States, those Canadian national units can lead pretty much any train on your railroad, unless it's like a local, but hey, you can always be uh, a, a little, uh, <clears throat> throw the rail fans a little bit of a bone uh, on, on a local with a heritage unit because that's always pretty exciting. Um, of course, you know, we've got uh, LED lighting features. We've got front and rear ditch lights, lit number boards, of course, directional headlights. And, uh, you know, these locomotives come equipped with the Loke Sound 5 Next 18 micro decoder. So, of course, you've got that high quality sound that we were able to get from testing the Tier 4 locomotive at, at Erie, Pennsylvania. We we're really thankful for GE for giving us that opportunity to do that all those years ago. So, we're really excited about these locomotives. You can order these locomotives now at scaletrains.com or find a select retailer. So thanks for tuning in and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't done so already. Smash that like button and we'll see you next time in the next Scale Trains Rivet Counter Spotlight video.